So I'll be talking about environment routing groups, um, rules, and extending sorted kit automation. Um, so before I go and start with uh, the topic, um, this is about me. I'm currently working as part platform architect at Rio Tinto, uh, mostly helping business users um, enabling and, and building solutions using Power Platform. I'm quite passionate about that particular topic, mostly focusing on governance and administration. Uh, and then I blog at um, myfullname.com. So if you want to check out uh, content related to the administration and governance. Um, and why environment routing? Um, if you look at a lot of business users, um, they hear about Power Platform. Maybe they might have watched videos uh, of Shane and Reza or some of the other folks. And then they go to make.powerapps.com, uh, Maker Portal, and they land up in default environment. Now, in this particular picture, you got only three people um, who are just building solutions, and they are in the default environment. And the thing with this one is no one knows they are all in default environment. Because most of the times when someone's starting out Power Platform, um, they never look at which environment they are in, but then they start building solutions and then some of them will be uh, pretty cool and they go and share with a lot of other people, right? They get excited and they want to share with their team members or even sometimes um, for the whole organization. So at the beginning, it all looks great. Um, most of the uh, company starts with few users. Let's say, let's say in this particular example, you got ten people uh, started with Power Platform, and they just got, example again, uh, hundred applications. Uh, not too many, uh, you think, which is good. Uh, but then after a few years, what happens is number of users building those solutions uh, will be increasing because they get to know. Like how awesome Power Platform and how they're building solutions. And they'll tell other people, they will tell other people, which means more people will start building solutions. And with Copilot and AI available right now, uh, it's going to go much towards the other side, which is great. Uh, but again, all these people who are starting with Power Platform, again, building solutions in default environment, all of them, maybe 100 people, in future, thousand people, all of them doesn't know they are actually going into default environment. So, what's happening here when thousands of applications getting built, and all of them may not be shared with many people, right? Someone uh, just start with Power Platform and, and trying to build those solutions, and many of them potentially not go live, as in like die, uh, unused apps and flows, a lot of other applications. And also, there won't be any control, like uh, as in to whom they could share with. And it's a big challenge for admin if you got one admin or maybe few people uh, managing Power Platform as in whole, right? Uh, so, solution: uh, Microsoft listened to the challenges that people are sharing with, um, and especially the admins and Power Platform owners. So they come up with a solution called uh, environment routing. And what happens when you enable this particular feature? Each of these maker will now, again, they don't know, they get a developer environment, again, uh, without noticing, right? Um, this is all happening in the back end that is being done by system. And each, each of them will get developer environment. So now they'll still go ahead and build solutions, but it's in one particular environment. And then, all these environments will be grouped, um, which is called environment group. So you got a big basket now. All of them is within that basket. So what does it mean is for all those environments, you can basically apply rules. So that's, that's where you got predefined set of rules. One of them is sharing controls. So within the sharing controls of Canvas apps, you can say, you are in developer environment now, or development environment. Um, uh, you can't share with many people. So you can just set it to uh, two people. So that means those um, applications that people are building, they can't share with other people, which is great. Now, the next thing would be uh, usage insights. Uh, that means you can basically see 
if they got any power power automated flows as in like uh, some of them could be i have seen many cases where uh, business users again a lot of people are learning so flow would be running based on update action and there would be one more update that could be running so i have seen instances it's like again without noticing they would be building solutions so you want to catch those using usage insights um, and then one of the most important rule for me is maker welcome content a lot of times um, when you get into the environment or open maker.portal you don't know exactly what you need to do um, there was always uh, options sending emails to people uh, but then a lot of people ignores emails from IT, right? Uh, whereas in maker welcome content exactly tells them, okay, you are in developer environment and you need to follow these restrictions. There are a few more rules like solution checker enforcement, um, backup retention and uh, AI generated descriptions, but they are still in preview, a uh, couple of them. Uh, but you rules itself is uh, quite good and, and the important um, if you wanted to leverage environment routing. Now, you know why and what, but how you're going to do it. It's a three-step process, uh, but one of the step will be done by the system. So in the step one, uh, you'll be updating the tenant settings and enabling developer environments. So that's what uh, you do. Sorry, the second one is actually enabling the environment routing and the system will potentially, uh, I mean, uh, further apply the rules uh, on those environments. So before you uh, make those changes, uh, you got few prerequisites, and that is called the environment group, where all the developer environments will be grouped together, uh, which is of type developer environments, as in all of them will be using Dataverse and also enabled as managed. So you need to you need to create a group and then provide a description. And once the environment routing kick um, starts, all of them get added here. And then on top of this particular group, there would be rules. So you can configure a um, few rules, at least minimum one. Um, so I would start with just sharing controls and maybe uh, maker welcome content if you want to start. Uh, so those are pretty good and um, help you to get started with using uh, those particular features, right? But there are other few things which are in preview, like I said, so you could leverage them as well. Now, once you set the prerequisites, the first step would be um, enabling developer environments at tenant level. So where most of the times, if you have a tenant, uh, it would be only for specific admins, you might not be enabling them, but for environment routing, you should enable it for everyone. And then once that is done, the next step would be environment routing itself, where you got the developer environment assignments uh, enabled. And then the next step would be within the environment routing, decide whether you want to do it for everyone or new makers only. So I would start with new makers only, if you haven't started using environment routing rather than all makers. So that means new makers is someone within the uh, power platform where they haven't built any solutions yet. And then you'll be using the environment group you created. And finally, the security group. So in this case, I just, uh, it's in my dev tenant. So I set it to none, but ideally you want to create a security group which says, uh, environment routing security group, or you could call it anything uh, you want, but maybe few test users and then um, test it how environment routing works. So once you do this configuration and then system will automatically apply the rules that you have enabled uh, previously, right? Now, once everything is enabled, um, you see that you have all the environments that get created, um, which is of managed. Right, so this is this is all great, but uh, how you are going to um, use or potentially deploy these to uh, next um, test or production environments? So you want to uh, manage these applications, and you don't want to use some other tools. Uh, but there are options. But it would be good to use something which is in built, 
right? So that's where Power Platform Pipelines is going to be much more useful. One of the requirements for the pipelines is uh, managed environments, uh, whether target uh, environments, which could be test or the prod, both needs to be managed environment. So what you can do is you can um, go ahead and extend the starter kit. So I have um, created a solution which potentially uses a API um, for which you can send environment ID. So if you don't know starter kit, um, starter kit is basically <clears throat> helping you uh, to automate a lot of stuff and also provide insights. Um, so one of the option here is using the uh, environment request app that could automate the environment request creation. So it also uses the uh, flow, uh, which is having a child flow that we have just shown. Uh, you could run that particular flow, right? So quickly, I'm just jumping to the a demo. So whenever you create an environment uh, that will become a not managed by default. So you can see uh, it's a no. But then <clears throat> this is the solution I was talking about where I got a chain flow. And so we got uh, the starter kit uh, COE command center um, app. So this is the one that you could give access to your makers uh, using which they could request different set of environments. So here I got a couple of them which are in the pending state. So once they submit the request, um, you got one more app, which is for the admins, and they can look at the look at each and every request, and then potentially go ahead and, okay, come on, thinking. Yeah, um, you could approve or reject that particular request. So what this one does, once you approve it, it kicks on the flow, which is the main flow, and, Within that flow, there is a section um, which will create the environment and set the roles and everything. But there is a section where I'm calling the chain flow, which would call <clears throat> this one. So there is a uh, delay as part of this particular chain flow because when you provision the environment, it does need some time. Um, so then, which will call the API um, within the um, Tail flow, which uses the um, HTTP request action, and then that provisions the managed environment. Um, yeah, once you uh, the environment got provisioned successfully, you get a notification. Uh, of course, you could uh, customize this one as well. Mm -hmm.